Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox Graphics, and I'm back with another video. I know we've been doing kind of a lot lately, but I've just kind of really just in the mood to just mess around in After Effects to create interesting and neat things. So that's why we're back, and that's why we created this star looking thing. I don't know what it is, but um, what is interesting about it is that we're just using one layer and just a one or two effects really to, to get this to happen and the main effect is called radio waves so we're just going to talk about radio waves and some of the interesting things you could do with it in after effects so let's just go ahead and jump into after effects here and you could see this is the one that we're going to create but all of the other ones that you'll see in this project file by the way you can get this project file on patreon it's just kind of adjusting slight values in the main composition that we create and you can create all kinds of different things create to your heart's content just adjust the sliders and you'll end up with something that looks pretty cool so the first thing that i want to talk about though before we even get into doing this is a little bit of math and i know <laughs> you know this isn't a math class but um to get the radio waves to spin around in the circle, we need to know an X and we need to know a Y position on a circle. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adjusting an angle and we're gonna be plugging that into these formulas here to get our X and Y position. Um, you'll see why it's important in a minute, but just be aware that this is the math behind the expressions that we're gonna to use to create this spin. Because if you just sp if you just rotated a layer, the radio waves wouldn't be rote they, they would kind of be rotating with the originator. Instead, we want them to kind of be cascading, and by doing so, we're adjusting the producer point. So let's just jump in, and you'll hopefully understand once we get started. So I'm just going to go to composition, new composition. I'm going to set this to 2,000 by 2,000. Um, I'm running at 25 frames per second, and I'm running this composition five minutes long. What you're gonna see is that it's gonna take probably about a minute or two minutes to get kind of a full, well, where we could start to see a loop occurring. And if you want this composition to loop as a GIF or something like that, then you're gonna wanna make the composition longer because our loop might actually occur some, somewhere out here like at like three minutes. So I'm gonna start by just creating a layer new solid, which you could just use control Y. And I'm gonna name this wave, 2000 by 2000, color being white, perfectly fine. Um, and I'm going to search for an effect called radio waves. So the radio waves effect actually isn't, doesn't give me an alpha layer. So if I toggle the alpha layer, um, whoa, actually I'm totally wrong. Never mind, it does. So I need to create a background, layer new solid. And I'm going to name this background. And I'm going to make this black. I did not know that. So I feel like an idiot. But I'm just going to lock the background layer and I'm going to take a look at this wave. And you can see here what this radio waves does is it creates basically cascading waves similar to a radio wave. Looks pretty interesting on its own, but not necessarily um, that interesting. <laughs> so let's make it more interesting. So like I was saying earlier, this producer point here is where the, where the originator starts. But if you animate this point, every wave that was already created stays where it was. It's just the position of the new wave moves. So that's why that's important. The other thing to note here is that this is in the center of the composition. My composition is 2000 by 2000. That means the center is 1000 by 1000. So again, when we get to the expression, that's gonna be important. A few things to show you in here is an under polygon, you could change the number of sides. So you can make this like an octagon or even a triangle, and then you could adjust curviness. Um, if you choose, I'm gonna leave it as a circle. So I'm gonna leave it at 64 and um, wave motion, you can increase the frequency, you can increase the expansion, you could even adjust the velocity here, so that'll give you something interesting. The last thing, I guess, is the width, so you could adjust the start width and the end width independently, so that's pretty cool. So we need to add some expressions to this. So I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and select the producer point, and so that will allow me to start adding an expression to this, and I am going to add two toggles or two kind of, I don't even know what they're called, controllers, I guess, expression controllers. I'm gonna add an angle controller and also a slider control. And I'm gonna hit enter on the slider control and call this radius. So this is how I'm gonna control the radius, my R value. And this is how I'm gonna control my, my angle, which is my T value. So now I'm just going to come in here and type X equals so X is going to equal R cosine of T, but in expression terms, you can't just write R cosine T. 
So I'm going to do, so for R, I'm going to just take the pick whip and bring it up to my radius. I'm going to hit the star icon, multiply, and I'm going to do math dot sine. I'm sorry, math dot cosine. So that's how I get my, my cosine. And then I'm going to drag this pick whip and grab the angle controller. Natively, this is using radians, not degrees. So I, I think there's a way to have it do degrees, but instead I'm just going to do the the lazy way and I'm just going to hit star and I'm going to multiply by actually yeah so I need to get it into radian so I'm going to multiply by math dot pi and I'm going to divide by 180 that will put put this slider controller into radians and I could just hit control C and then control V and change this X to a Y and change this cosine to a sine Now I could hit enter, bracket x comma y. And now we have our producer moving. So our angle set to zero, so we could adjust the angle, but actually we need to increase the radius. So the radius is gonna, is gonna be what's, what's moving this outwards, but we don't want it to be at zero, zero. We want it to be at a thousand by a thousand. So I'm just gonna add an offset here and I'm just going to plus plus a thousand, let's see if that helped us. And so if I set this radius to zero, it goes back to the center. So that's kind of our offset. Let's set this radius to, I don't know, something like 400 and set a keyframe for my angle controller. Go to maybe, I don't know, one second and set this to one. So we'll do one full rotation. Let me bring this down to a quarter and let's see what we get the frequency is set to one so this point is actually making a full rotation in that time so let me just increase the frequency here so you'll see what's happening but unfortunately it stops at that one so i'm just going to hold alt and select the stopwatch and go loop capital o out continue so this will continuously rotate then at that same speed. And so you could see that we're starting to get somewhere kind of interesting, but it's gonna take a little bit um, of finessing to get this to look interesting. So there's a few things that we can do. Let's say we set this frequency to 10. These circles should originate at the same position kind of over time. But if we just move this slightly off, that means every time it comes around, it's gonna be slightly off. So that, that's how we start to get more interesting effects. I think I want this to be like, I don't know, 8.04 or something. I think that's what I used. Let's jump back to the example, 8.07. I um, actually should just name this composition while I'm here. Tutorial. Name that one lesson. So I think 8.04 was what I used. And let's see some of the other settings. So I set the lifespan to 10, which that's the same. Um, the fade out time, no, light, lifespan's the same. I'm just, I guess I could adjust the start and end. And it's really gonna matter how much I adjust this point. That's really what's gonna be the, the main driver here. Set my expansion to one actually. So you can see there, just by adjusting this keyframe, by just a few, just one frame, it completely changes the look of this. So that looks pretty interesting as well. Just be aware, I, you know, I think I'm gonna run with this because this looks interesting and it looks different than the other ones we've created. But just be aware that if you just move this keyframe over by one, now you're getting something that looks like that, which is pretty much what we created before. And then adjusting even this frequency will then get you even closer to what we had. I find this kind of stuff to be super interesting because they really do, it really does change the look of this. So that looks pretty cool. It kind of looks organic almost in nature. I mean, pretty much from here we could be done. Anyways, let's just start colorizing this because this coloration is kind of, it's a little bit boring. So I'm going to change the color to white and I'm gonna start adding some adjustments layers to this. 
Oh, I mean, I guess I should add too, is that you can't adjust the radius here and that will also um, affect it a little bit. But um, I think 430 on, you know, a 2000 by 2000 comp looks pretty cool. Oh, I guess the other thing I'll note is see in this example how it looks sharper down here, but it looks softer out here. It's actually really easy to do that without any sort of ex additional effects. All you have to do in this wave layer and radio waves layer is change the profile of the wave. So right now it's set to square, but take a look at what happens when I set this to sawtooth. Boom, totally changes the way it looks. The sign is the way you get that softer look as, um, as it, I guess, softens up the edge. So when it's nice and small, it's, you know, the softening doesn't really do very much, but once it gets large, it adds a, a ton of softening. So, um, no, I'm just, I'm just messing it up. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. There's another effect I actually used in this example as I use something called flow motion. So I could search for that flow motion and add it directly to my wave. Set the center point to a thousand by a thousand. Yeah, I think I pulled that in a bit. So I did something like that. So it kind of looks like there's some living being on the inside. So, I mean, again, there's tons of different stuff you could do. We're just adjusting toggles and there's no right right or wrong answer, but I do kind of like that um, that sort of look. So you can see here, this is what I meant. It's gonna take a little bit before you get your loop in place because it takes a long time for all of these layers to come into view and then hit the center and then start to create kind of your element, your main element, which is that. So how long did that take? It took about I guess, 10 seconds or 15 seconds. So it didn't take too long. So I guess we could have cut it, cut it shorter. But this thing is gonna loop and it's gonna take a long time to loop. I'll tell you that. It's probably gonna take like 10 seconds to loop. So if it be on the keyboard. One thing um, that helps me when I loop this type of stuff is to add rulers. And when you add rulers, you can pull out these um, guides, these guide layers. So I'll pick a point. So I'll pick a point right in the beginning here. And I'm gonna add some rulers that say outline, you know, this circle here. And we'll have to get rid of these later. I just wanna outline that. So that way then I can move along in the future. Actually, this one I might be able to loop like super short. No, I can't. And the reason being is that since we're not using whole values, we're not saying like create a new circle every 10 seconds and have it rotate once per second. What we end up with is something that is actually fairly unique each cycle. So it's gonna take a while for us to find a point that um, that matches up perfectly. Like you can see here, um, you know, I don't think you know, we're not gonna get a layer that fits within those bounds for quite a while. So one thing that you can do, so you can see here that this one, you know, it's not quite where it needs to be, but it's pretty fricking close. What you can do here is what I did on the original one as well, is I'm gonna add a rotation. So I'm gonna come to the first and hit R on the keyboard, set a rotation point, come to the end, and just rotate this slightly until I get it to match up and it's not gonna be perfect. We, we might have to keep searching, but yeah, so you can see it's not quite, it's not quite perfect, but it almost is. So it looks like we we jump in time just slightly. So let's go one, key, one more frame over, and that looks, that looks almost perfect. Man, we're talking about like one frame of overlap here. That looks pretty much as as close as we're gonna get this one. Um, obviously, you know, you could do some time remapping and, and try to get it exactly perfect, but that's as close as I could get this um, without, you know, spending the rest of my of my career um, moving over one keyframe and moving over the endpoint. So, okay, so we have our loop, which is great. And now we can start adding some additional interesting effects here. So I'm gonna create a layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna start layering some stuff on, um, a channel blur. I'm going to add on a glow. 
Some of these you might not even want to add glow, to be honest. But here's where, you know, the color comes in. So I'm just going to add a tint. And my color, I'm going to make just off red. And then just off purple or blue. And now I could add a new adjustment layer. I'm going to add a noise to it. And I'm going to crank up that noise. So, um, you know, at this point, I might go in and adjust the thicknesses and, and try to make it so it's not as blown out. Like, we're, we're getting a lot of clipping here. And I think part of that clipping has to do with the, the glow. Um, it pretty much all has to do with the glow. So I might come into the glow and, and adjust the settings a bit um, to make it a little bit less of an issue. This is going to just slow down your computer. Nothing else to say about it. There's a ton of layers on screen. I know it's only one layer in your in your kind of panel, whatever this is called. But with that with that um, radio wave effect, it's going to just kill your CPU, especially since the single core processing. It's it's this really would benefit from multi core. But you know, coming back here to the beginning, you, know, you still can make massive changes. So we just move that keyframe over once. You know, now we're back to something like this. And now we're looking at, you know, something that looks very similar to the original composition. You can move it out a, a lot. And let's see. Now you're going to get to something that kind of looks like the third example. The difference between actually the third example and the second example, it's a quite a fine point which obviously you could tell by how much I'm moving this keyframe. I don't have very much patience to look for fine points. Um, I could just open this composition, hit you on the keyboard, and we could see that, um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just click this layer so you could see these settings here. And so you could make, you know, the adjustments accordingly if you want to recreate this one. Yeah, I mean, as you could see, it's all the same stuff. It's just adjusting that, that toggle just a little bit. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe, check out other videos on this channel, and if you want to download the project file, you again can on our Patreon account. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.